And we are live. Hello, everyone. My name is William Quiviger. Um, I'm the community manager at Docker, and I'm very happy to welcome you to our first ever Docker community all hands. So this is being recorded, but um, for posterity, I will mention that we are Thursday, December 10th, 2020. So very excited. And we have uh, more than almost 4,000 registrations. And I see that attendees are dialing in as I speak. So um, yeah, it's going to be a packed house. Very excited. So um, we've got a very packed agenda today. Um, next slide, Alyssa. Um, I had, uh, we have a lot of presentations, some demos, uh, some community shout outs, but uh, yes, um, as I shared in our numerous communications uh, in the run up to this event, we're going to have executive updates by uh, Scott Johnson, Dr. CEO, Jean Laurent de Morlon, VP of Engineering, um, and Donnie Berkholtz, VP of Products. We'll also then dive into uh, product updates uh, and then um, segue into some fantastic live demos. Um, you're really, really going to uh, love these two demos that we've prepared for, for you. Um, and then that's going to be followed by a community update and community shout outs. And then last but not least, we're going to dive into uh, the audience Q&A. Um, we've been collecting some uh, amazing uh, questions. I think we've reached more than 80 questions from the of the community and thank you all for for upvoting for your favorite ones we're going to be answering the top 10 questions um so just before we begin i want to just thank you one more time i want to thank the whole community uh for um joining registering to to join this uh, this event and of course thank you the, um, i want to thank those who are going to be watching the recording who weren't able to 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 register or to join um, and who are just watching the recording i want to thank the community the community is the backbone of, of everything we do at docker um, and that's why this event is so important to us this is an opportunity for us to come together to share to align to um, dream up big ideas about the future and to ask each other you know questions that um, maybe are not always uh, easy to ask or um, it's not always you don't, you don't always have the, the opportunity to ask um, some questions to, to Docker's leadership. So this is the opportunity. Uh, and we want, hopefully we'll make this, uh, this community all hands a um, quarterly event, if all goes well. As I mentioned in my blog post a few weeks ago, this is an experiment. Um, I'm sure some things are gonna work better than others and we're gonna continue to iterate and improve this. So um, we'll be circulating a survey at the end of the event uh, for you to share your feedback and tell us what you liked and what you didn't like. So without further ado, I will uh, give the virtual microphone to um, Scott Johnston, uh, CEO of Docker for uh, first presentation. Over to you, Scott. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, William. And let me just echo um, William's thanks uh, community, um, whether it's morning, afternoon, nighttime, the fact that you're dialing in and participating here means so much to us. And um, Docker, as William said, Docker isn't Docker without you. And uh, whether it's your use of the product, the feedback, whether you're a contributor to the open source upstream, um, whether you're sharing at a meetup with, with friends and colleagues, all of what you do um, makes Docker possible. And so we're hoping events like this, and, and couldn't thank William and the team enough for suggesting this and kicking this off. Events like this are designed to give you the latest and greatest of what's going on here and give you a chance to ask us uh, things that we can do more of to, to help you um, help you do your do your jobs, do your work, be even more excited about Docker. And so Docker went through, I'll, I'll be real quick, I know we want to get to the to the demos and the hands-on the hands-on reviews, but um, Docker went through a, a significant reset uh, a year ago and uh, we just wanted to step back and share with you what that was all about and make sure we're all on the same page with that we're, we're here to solve problems for, for you, our developer community. So if we go to the next slide, Alyssa, if we go to the next slide, there we go. So one of the things we've heard, one of the things we've heard uh, time and again from from many of you, um, regardless of your geography, regardless of of how many years you've been using Docker or how many years you've been you've been a developer, is that uh, getting your applications from source code to running in the cloud is really difficult. Um, and it's it's one of the things that that you'd like to see improve and get much much faster. Um, and if we go to the next slide, 
we have heard from many of you time and again that there's so many challenges um, in getting your, your application from source code to running in the cloud. Um, there's a whole uh, plethora of tools and configurations and formats, and more often than not, you and your teams end up cobbling this together with some scripts or some manual processes, or you know, we continue to hear Excel spreadsheets are ways in which state gets shared around. And, um, and yet uh, many of you are asking us like, hey, Docker, isn't this something that you can help with since, since the Docker container, since the Docker tooling and the Docker image format is consistent through, through so many of these tools. And so if we go to the next slide, we'll share with you where our refocus company is going. Um, and as of last year, we are laser-like focused 100% on the needs of the developer and the development team. And we're focused on delivering a single Docker experience that is delivered through multiple different type of technologies. So on the desktop, you have Docker Engine, Docker Compose, Kubernetes, Docker Build, BuildX. And in the hub, you have automated builds and registries and um, lots of content with the Docker official images, uh, as well as integration with tools such as Atlassian Bitbucket and such. And we view that as an entire end then experience to help developers and dev teams get their applications from source code to running in the cloud. But really important, we don't view this as a solo effort that, that is um, just Docker's to solve for, because we have a wonderful community of partners out there. And so if we go to the next slide, um, we see the ecosystem partners as providing those fundamental building blocks in the pipeline end to end. And you've seen us do this already. So we have in auto builds, we automatically have uh, GitHub and Bitbucket dialed in if you wanna use those, those source code management tools. Um, you've seen us deliver in the last year, the sneak integration on the desktop as well as in hub for automatic scanning of your images. And you've seen us release the integrations with uh, AWS ECS and Azure ACI to make it super easy to get your application from a local environment deployed to a cloud endpoint. And so this is our strategy going forward. It's focused on you, the developer and the development teams in helping you get your applications from source code to cloud as quickly as possible, to simplify that whole process and to make sure that we're giving you choice amongst all the tools that are out there and to consume and use those tools in a way that are intuitive, easy, uh, and just help you get your job done versus fussing around with configurations and glue code. So before I pass off to Jean Laurent, let me talk about um, two more things. So, so first is what I just described, we think it's good for, for not only the developers, but it's good for our ecosystem and that those two go together, that there's a nice flywheel there, that the, the, the better and easier and a higher velocity and simpler we make Docker for development teams, that's just going to attract more and more teams to come and use Docker and use it as part of their, their pipeline, use it as part of their tool chain. That, of course, is going to encourage more ecosystem partners to come into the ecosystem to standardize on the Docker tooling, to standardize on the Docker OCI image format. And that, in return, is going to provide more and more choice to development teams, which will encourage more development teams to come and join and be successful. And so we see these two sides working in tandem, in, in, in harmony, to really uh, continue to bring you, the developers, best of breed in terms of tools, in terms of deployment endpoints, in terms of application content, um, that you'll continue to build and share and run great applications. So before I hand it off to Jean Laurent, one more slide. Um, if we could go to the next one. And so, uh, oops, not yet. OK, um, just to recap, and again, this goes back to why the community is so important. Uh, we just want to thank you for your ongoing support over the years. Uh, Docker was first open sourced in March of 2013, and we're coming up on um, eight years, <laughs> which is which is a long time in tech. But we continue to see just phenomenal support and growth and excitement around Docker. And this latest example is from about 65,000 developers that filled out the Stack Overflow Developer Survey this year. And you can see you can see the charts. I don't have to go through them, but but you all voted Docker the number one most wanted platform the number two most loved platform, and the number three most used platform. Again, some also very awesome and very excellent uh, platforms out there. And so we just want to say thank you. Uh, it's a testament to you and how much you're a part of making Docker a great product, a great product experience, and keeping the Docker movement and community uh, healthy and strong. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jean Laurent to, to share with you what's been up for the last year. Thank you, Jean Laurent. Hi everybody. Um, so I'm Jean, I'm the VP of Engineering here at Docker. Um, so, um, but Alisa, maybe we can go right straight to the next slide, please. 
so the first thing is like what what 2020 uh what a year it has been right uh like uh, docker as you as you've seen is one of the most wanted platforms which means that one of the crucial thing we have uh, is listen to what you guys want us to be doing and uh this uh this slides just show like some of the highlights that we've uh, of the stuff we've been shipping this year so starting like on the on the left hand side this is like all the work we've been doing on uh, making sure that uh, everybody who's working on Windows as a developer has a benefit from the latest improvement that uh, um, Microsoft has been doing on WSO2 especially. Uh, we open up the Compose specification for you guys to be able to um, actually understand more and fill this a bit more uh, shared. There is a few other things in there like, uh, you know, like everybody was kind of using Kitematic back in the time. We kind of, kind of uh, provide now a default UI in, in desktop uh, so so you can see this. We also modernize a lot of the hub because we know you are all pushing and pulling uh, from there. And also like everybody who is actually pushing uh, images uh, or deploying images to the cloud now can do this even more easily with the Corpus plugin for AWS and ACI. On top of that, we just shipped uh, um, a, a new version of the Docker engine. So it's been it's been quite a, quite a, quite a year. Uh, we're pretty happy to ship all the things and listen to you, the feedback that you guys provide. Um, and then for the next slide, but Please, Alisa. And those are the highlights. But we also like all the shadow work that you don't see, like all the stuff that we're doing behind the scenes. Uh, like there is like more than a 30, uh, 40 um, uh, desktop releases, uh, around 10 engine releases, uh, around 10 Compose and, uh, and uh, Docker Compose releases, and also like all the updates on Hub that we don't count because we get just ship like every now and then. Um, that's all the work also that. All those things are about all the tiny details that you have told us to fix. Uh, and uh, we're testing those things, making sure it works on all the platforms that you are working on. And uh, those are all the tiny details that you, you wanted us to also to, to fix, and we're still there doing that. Uh, on the next slide, and just like that was last year, but just in November, uh, we implemented the fair use policy on polls uh, on HUB. Uh, we partnered with Canonical uh, to improve the Ubuntu-based image. Uh, the holes, the releases that we've talked about on, we are, which are GA, right, uh, on uh, yeah, for ECS and ACI, um, the engine releases I just talked about, and a few uh, desktop releases, including one when you can have support for Pro and Teams uh, users. So all all those things are just shipped in November, right? Um, and the next slide. And I know, like, when we ask about people, like. Uh, like you know like apple has has uh, designed a new hardware and changing a lot of things behind behind their their shiny uh laptops uh the thing is for us it's quite a quite a work to make to make sure that that thing uh docker still works uh on this new hardware so um uh, you're going to see a demo from dave uh, later on dave, dave is actually working uh, on the desktop team and actually he's the chief architect be behind all the work on the apple silicon and uh, Ben also is going to talk a little bit about this, but we're going to provide a developer preview today. Um, and of course, it's a preview, right? So it's going to break. Uh, the, the thing is more like to give you, uh, for the impatience and all the people who are having those new machines, they can try to test out uh, Docker. Uh, when some uh, realized that Docker wasn't re ready right now, they were like, oh, how, how can I make my work, right? We're trying to, we're working on this. It's going to be GA a bit later uh, next year. Uh, it's a long time commitment from Docker working on Mac OS. And also, like uh, when you're going to start working on those machines, a few of us have those, you're going to see how important it is uh, uh, to um, use the Docker multi, multi architecture support, uh, seeing how you can build images for Intel or ARM images right from your own laptop. That's all the things. Um, and I just want to finish by uh, saying uh, uh, first, thank you for the community to provide all these feedbacks. We, we try to listen as much as we can to answer and code what you want uh, us to do. Uh, and at the same time, if you are uh, interested into working on some of the environment I've been talking to, we got some position open. So if you want to jump right straight into one of the fantastic teams that are working with me, I'm more than happy to, to talk to you uh, in there. Thanks. And I, I think now I'm passing the ball to Donny. And hello, everybody, and I'd like to echo what JL said and what Scott said. Uh, I joined Docker just about two months ago, and one of the biggest reasons that drew me here was the community. Um, I've always been impressed by the strength of Docker's community since day one, and I'm really excited to be incorporating your feedback and your problems um, as we're solving 
uh, those and as we're building out our roadmaps for the future. Next slide, please. And as we started thinking about what our vision looks like, um, the thing I wanted to make sure we were really strong on was listening to you. So we've gone back, uh, we've talked to the community, we've talked to the captains, we've looked at developer surveys, um, we've worked with our technical advisory group to make sure we have a strong sense of the biggest problems that you have. And we've been using those to create what our product roadmap is going to look like for the next year and for beyond. Um, and as you see on the right side, those break down into three big areas that we think about as build, share, and run. Um, we've heard you telling us that your time is valuable. Um, you don't wanna waste time finding things. You don't wanna waste time configuring things. You want things to just work and be there when you need them. Um, you're having a hard time finding and creating um, high quality images that follow best practices, that are secure, uh, and that meet all the standards that you expect so that you can share great things with your team and beyond. Um, we hear you say that it's hard to share your work with your team, to share your setups, your configurations, um, your application environments and workspaces. And we hear you saying that you want things to feel the same. You want a high fidelity experience wherever you're working so it feels local, whether you're on your desktop, whether you're in a remote developer environment, whether you're in CI or whether you're working with a cloud environment for production. Um, and so we're taking that feedback and those problems and turning those directly into what our roadmap is going to look like for next year. Um, and you can look to see more of those as we start shipping at the same kind of pace JL described to you um, going into Q1 and beyond. Um, next slide, please. Today, we're really excited to make additional announcements in building upon that momentum. You heard JL talking about Apple Silicon. Um, we're also pleased to announce Docker Desktop 3.0, which is the culmination of years of work going into improving the platform. Um, and what you'll see as part of this, based on the customer feedback that we've heard from you, um, you'll see that you may recall as a desktop user that every time you get an update, that update could be hundreds of megabytes. Um, no more, that's gone. Now you're gonna start getting Delta updates, just the things that change to speed up your workflow so that you're not going to get a pop-up in the middle of your day that asks you to stop working and slow down and do an update. Instead, it's going to be much more magical, faster, um, less network usage. Secondly, we've heard you say that you don't like choosing between stability versus getting bug fixes and new features quickly. And so we're going to be merging together so the stable and edge channels into the same place so that you don't have to choose between those two frustrating choices of, I want things to just work, and I want the new fixes and I want the latest and greatest features. Um, and you'll see later on what we're doing with developer preview to help give those who want more experimental features the ability to get there. Um, next slide, please. We're also thrilled to announce, as you've seen with the blog post yesterday, Docker Engine 20.10. Um, there's gonna be a number of great things in here that we've been listening to you. Um, even before I joined Docker, two of the biggest things that I heard were how do I get rootless mode? Um, and how do I get Seagrips version two so that Docker works in more places? Um, specifically, we've seen that, you know, on Fedora, you have to customize your kernel. Um, it's a big pain. We wanna remove that pain, make it better for you so that things work, giving you security, um, bringing you Docker wherever, whenever you need it. And furthermore, there's lots more features in 20.10. Um, these are just a few examples. You see that BuildX is coming out of experimental. That's going to improve caching, concurrency, multi-platform support. Again, helping Docker work faster for you, saving you time working in more places. Um, logging is becoming more accessible so that Docker log works with uh, third-party logging drivers, not just with ours. Uh, the metrics API is no longer experimental, which makes it easier to integrate with third-party monitoring tools like Prometheus and others. Um, and finally, secrets are getting easier and better um, as we're moving more features out of experimental and adding new features to let you more easily pass in secrets and share secrets within your environment in a secure way. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Ben Gotch, our principal product manager here at Docker. Everyone. So thank you again for coming to listen. Um, it's always fun speaking to you guys. Uh, I've got a few product updates um, and I'll be going into a little bit more of the detail on some of the things you've heard mentioned already uh, and talking a bit about some of the timeframes for that as well. So if you can go next slide, please. So the first thing I want to talk about is the work we've done with Compose this year. Um, it's been 
awesome to lean into a tool that everyone already loves so much and is so widely used. Um, there's over a million Compose files on GitHub. Everyone we speak to who's a developer highlights how Compose is a tool leads to the script. It is the developer-centric tool for working with multi-container applications. And at the start of the year, that's why we moved the Compose specification out into its, its own community managed piece. Um, we, sort of, we set up the Compose spec. And as a result of that, we sort of had our partnerships with, with Amazon and Microsoft. And we had both of those experiences, being able to use Compose to deploy to ACI, and Compose to deploy to ECS, Go, GA, uh, back in November, which was really awesome to do. Which also brings me to some of the future of Compose. So we've had our roadmap for a little while, redoing Docker Compose and Go. And I know a lot of you have been asking for this. Um, today, there is a preview of that being released in Docker Desktop. Uh, it'll be Docker Space Compose rather than Docker Dash Compose. And we'll be opening that up as part of the Compose Spec repo. Um, and we'll be looking to sort of get your feedback on that over the next few months as we work out what we need to bring across to make Compose and Go a success going forward. The next thing that I'd love all of your input and support in more widely uh, is how we're going to look at sort of doing that that next backend for for Compose to look at how we go from Compose to Kubernetes. Um, if you'd like to be involved in that conversation, then please come along to the the Compose community meetings. I'll send out some information for that after this, and we'll make sure that's up on our blog. Um, and then one of the things we'll come to. Uh, the questions at the end was more cloud providers for the Compose integration. I know that one of the questions there is sort of about the, what about Google backend? So we'll cover that in the FAQ at the end. So if we go next slide, please. So Donnie covered quite a bit on the engine release. Um, I wanted to dig in a little bit more onto what we're doing on Docker Desktop. So as Donnie said, the 3.0 release today represents a lot of work on desktop. In the last two years, the team have done an awful lot to improve Docker Desktop. Um, so I'm just getting my list because it's too much for me to remember. So over the last two years, the team have rewritten uh, the back end on Windows. We've rewritten uh, a lot of the file system work on Mac to solve CPU issues, and we're still working on the performance issues there. We've released the UIs in Docker Desktop. Um, and as Donnie said, as of today, we've changed the update mechanism to make those updates much smaller. Um, and on top of that, I'm pleased to also say that we've got two technical previews that we're going to be releasing in the next couple of weeks. Um, well, we're going to be releasing the technical previews tomorrow. So for Windows, we'll be releasing a technical preview of GPU support. So this will allow you to use a GPU resource in Windows with Docker through Docker Desktop. And to our dev preview audience, which William will talk about our dev preview program more uh, later on, tomorrow we'll be releasing the Mac M1 preview build. So we will be releasing that to that audience tomorrow. And then we'll be releasing that more widely when we've got some feedback from that preview audience. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll have that released as a, a technical preview for everyone to play with. On the hub side, um, we've, as, as we saw earlier, we've had hundreds of changes deployed into to hub this year. Um, looking at what we've sort of got coming next, we're going to be adding some of those things that we've talked about in previous, in our blog post previously. Um, we're looking to change the UI in hub and give you more visibility into your content. We're going to start to put up your pull rate information on hub as well. So we know we've got the feedback from our, from where we've done the rate limiting, people are a little uncertain where they are. Um, it's our commitment to you to make sure you've always got the visibility of what you've got in Hub and how you're engaging with us before we start to make changes to that in future. And we'll make sure you've always got visibility to all your content, all your polls, how much you're using there so that you can appreciate how we're working with you to make those changes. And along with that, for our pro and team users, we're also going to be releasing read-only tokens uh, early next year. Um, so hopefully that'll make it that authentication journey with CIs a little bit easier. Next slide, please. We're also, <clears throat> I wanted to give you a little bit of insight into how product managers at Docker work. Um, and I was trying to work out how to do this earlier. And I realized it was easiest just to talk about sort of what I do, and what we're trying to do as a company to, to create a, a feedback loop that lets us work with you, work with our community. And that's why it's awesome to have such a big community of Docker users. So going forward, Docker is gonna be trying to release a lot more experimental features. 
um, and we've got the first of those also being released today as part of Docker Desktop, and that's a CLI tool for Hub. So this allows you to interact with all of your objects, your scans, your account management, and everything in your Hub account from a CLI. Um, that's an experimental tool, which the, the name of is Hub Dash Tool. Um, we'll be looking for, for feed, feedback on that um, as to whether we should progress that and how we should progress that. Um, and we'll also, again, we've got that dev preview group that William will talk about later, where we're going to be looking to feed a lot more experiments into them, as well as more widely into the community. If you do have feedback, then always jump on our public roadmap. Um, always feel free to at me at Evac89 on tickets. Um, hopefully some of you on the list have at least attended or seen that before. Um, I do engage there. We all engage there. Everyone in the company, I can tell you, is lurking the roadmap most days uh, and sharing things on there. We all read it. Um, and then from a community point of view, please get involved in the community. We do listen for their feedback as well. Join us in some of those community specification meetings. If you're interested in Compose, engage in future all hands, engage with us in the Slack. And also thank you to William who will be driving a lot of that for us as well. So thank you for your time. Uh, again, if you are interested in M1 uh, Mac support, then listen for some ideas from William on how to get involved in the dev preview to get access to that tomorrow. Uh, and we'll provide more information in the later part of ne next week on how everyone else can get access to that. Great. Thanks, uh, Ben. And um, this is a perfect segue to our next, um, seg next segment of this all hands, um, the much anticipated live demos. So um, we will be handing over the uh, screen and the microphone to Dave Scott, who will be doing the first demo uh, on Apple or on Docker on Apple Silicon. Dave, over to you. Thank you. Yeah, so I don't want to make anyone jealous, but my dev machine you can see here is an Apple Silicon Mac Mini with an M1 chip. Pretty cool. And I've got a developer build of Docker installed, of course. So you can see my whale menu in the corner. And I've got my Docker engine is running, green light. I'm logged in with my Docker ID. That's all good. I've got the dashboard here with my various containers on it. I go back to my terminal and I ask the machine, what architecture are you? It says ARM64. And if I ask an Alpine container, what arch are you? It says AR64. Basically the same thing. So what you're seeing here is that uh, uh, we've got a, a native ARM Docker engine in a native ARM VM running native ARM containers uh, from multi-arch images, um, and yeah, it's all working nicely. If I uh, if I just uh, show it to a checkout of the awesome Compose, and I was looking at the React Rust Postgres example, and I can Docker Compose up as normal, and of course containers start. Lots of logs. I can see this in my dashboard. I can look at the front end. We see, see, see the icon for that. Here it is. I can open it in the browser. Yep, that all works. So things like port forwarding is all good. Um, I can just control C that again. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So yeah, I mentioned, um, and various people have mentioned uh, multi arch. These images are all multi arch. So uh, that's all, all just works. Uh, for my images, I've been building myself. I've been using uh, BuildX. So, you know, with this. Uh, out of experimental in 2010 engine uh, released all in desktop uh, today, I think. So I've been running, uh, you know, build X build. I just have to tell it which platforms I want. So I ARM64 for me and Intel basically for my my colleagues who uh, lack the hardware and still on legacy Intel. Yeah, so that all just works nicely. Yeah, I can just run that command just to just to show. Yeah, so that runs and builds a multi arch image. Uh, yeah, and it, we've. Inside the VM, we've got the KMU with bin from it, so we can uh, we can run and build uh, Intel things even on this native ARM machine. Um, again, and one one of the reasons it, ha it has to be native ARM is because although the Apple Silicon machines come with Rosetta 2, which can emulate Intel for things like Photoshop, uh, it doesn't work for virtual machines, and we need a virtual machine to run Docker. So hence, it's all native, but uh, Docker obviously supports ARM64 really well. Um, yeah, so it all basically works. All the core stuff is there. I've got file sharing. I've got um, 
let me see, docker run dash v. Yeah, I can just show you the file sharing is all working as you would expect. Um, a few bits and pieces uh, aren't quite there yet, uh, missing some minor things like some DNS names like host docker internal, VM docker internal. Um, that's quite easy to fix, just haven't done it yet. Uh, and without those DNS names, uh, in the developer preview build, we'll not be able to start Kubernetes clusters, but once the DNS is fixed, that'll all work, and uh, there's, the HTTP proxy is not wired, a few minor things, um, but it's all basically, uh, it's all looking good. And uh, that's end of demo. Thanks, uh, thanks Dave, for that. Um, it was great. Um, and again, just to echo um, what Ben just said earlier, if you want to have a sneak preview of this uh, Docker goodness, uh, please join the developer preview program, which uh, I'll be uh, speaking about in a few minutes. Um, all right, so next uh, up is uh, Sylvain uh, Lubecki, who will be giving us a demo on uh, Hub CLI. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sylvain Lubecki. I'm senior software engineer at Docker. And today I will show you uh, what we were working on lately. Um, so yeah, as Ben said, uh, we have a new command line tool uh, we call uh, hub-tool, uh, which is dedicated to the Docker Hub. Um, so let's first uh, add tool. Uh, I will log in to my account. And uh, what can I do uh, with that? Um, here is a help. Um, I can check my hub account account info and I can check yeah, my plan. I can check my current limitations. Um, what else, what can I do? I can uh, check my current um, rate limit. So here I'm limited, I guess, yes. Um, I can list hub tool um, org ls. And as you can see, um, we try to get the same UX as the hub. Right. Um, what else what can I do? Um, I can list my own repo. And can see the number of pools, stars, is it private or not? Um, um, I can, yeah, as you can see, I can click. <laughs> And I have direct link uh, on the hub. Um, I can take a repo and list all my tags uh, to like ls slash docker up, and I can check yes all um, all the tags I have. I can check if it's active or stale, and the last updates, the size. Um, I can also, oh, I forgot, yeah, I can remove repo if I want. And I, if I just type that, I need to, it's irreversible, so be careful with that. Um, I have to confirm or I can force the deletion. Um, so about uh, the tags, I can also Oops, sorry. I can also have a JSON output and all the commands you saw uh, have a JSON output. So um, you can use it uh, to script uh, things. Uh, you can use it in your CI. Um, it's just a tool to help you uh, manage uh, your hub account. Um, what else, what do we have? Um, I saw that uh, we saw that we uh, could um, list uh, our, own, um, our own repo, but we can also list all the official images or any public images, like Nginx. You can see there, there are many, <laughs> uh, many, um, many tags. Uh, what else? Um, I can also inspect a tag. Let's take Jenkins. And as you can see, we can see layer by layer, the size of the layer, the command uh, which created this layer, and when the SHA, yeah, well, you have many info here. 
Um, you can see also uh, the environment variables, uh, the volumes exposed, the exposed ports, the entry points, well, anything you, you need to know in this uh, image. So yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Um, so what is the status of this tool? Uh, as Ben said, it's an experiment. Uh, so it's uh, available now in a Docker desktop uh, 3.0. So please try it uh, and give us as many feedback as you can. And depending your feedback, uh, this tool we can be maybe uh, merge in the Docker CLI or uh, maybe uh, leave its own life as a hub tool. It depends, it's up to you. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Sylvain. Thank you. That was great. Um, and just a reminder, you know, we are recording this, so you can uh, rewatch these demos um, very shortly. We will be sharing the, the link to, uh, to the recording. It's all hands. So um, let's transition. Um, no community all hands is complete without a community update. So I'd like to update you all on um, a few initiatives um, that we've been working on uh, in the past uh, weeks and months to engage, to support, and to grow um, the Docker community. So um, obviously this year has been a particular year for, uh, for community events. Um, I'm sure all the community managers on this call uh, can attest that it's been a you know, particularly difficult year and we've had to pivot and kind of rethink how we do community events. Obviously community events is central to any healthy open source community project, uh, but we're working very hard to, uh, to reboot our community events plan and strategy and 2021. Uh, we're going to see some, some great stuff and we'll be announcing in the next couple of weeks, you know, how we, we plan to reboot our, our uh, meetup, uh, meetup groups and events around the world. Um, another area that we're going to be focusing on and we've started to focus on is how we can cross-pollinate and work with um, developer communities across the board and how we can really cross-pollinate and uh, share um, and work together and work in lockstep for you know, different projects and initiatives. And so some of you may have joined yesterday's, uh, sorry, Tuesday's workshop. Um, that uh, my colleague Peter McKee uh, co-hosted with Matt Rasban of the Python developer community. Uh, these are, it's a work, one hour workshop to engage Python developers and, um, and really share best practices and uh, tips on how to um, you know, um, use Docker. Uh, so we have, uh, we have a series of workshops uh, that will, and, and activities that will engage other communities, the Go community, Java community, et cetera. Um, we also have uh, important initiatives to engage um, the contributor, the contributor community, um, and creating new pathways for contribution to Docker. Um, and so we recently we have uh, some uh, Docker captains who've led initiatives to support our efforts in, you know, for contribution to our documentation and also to our Docker samples uh, repo. Uh, Brett Fisher, uh, uh, Brendan Mitchell have been doing a great, uh, great job um, mobilizing, trying to create a small task forces around these initiatives. And, and we're going to see more of these task forces in the, in the weeks and months to come. We've also created some uh, content guidelines for um, community members who are interested in um, writing or guest blogging on the Docker blog. And so we have some guidelines uh, to help anyone who's interested in sharing um, work they're doing or uh, anything uh, related to Docker, of course, uh, on our blog post. Um, and so many of you have heard, uh, must have heard that uh, we launched a Docker open source program um, to support open source projects. So we've already uh, whitelisted 90 plus namespaces of uh, fantastic uh, open source projects uh, just to um, really want to reinforce our commitment to, to open source. And we've been, we will launch a blog series to uh, spot, uh, shed some light um, and showcase some uh, incredible work that uh, different organizations and nonprofits and open source projects are, are, are doing um, using uh, um, Docker technology. Um, and then a long-term ambitious uh, initiative that we're working on is uh, the Docker community portal. It will be become a hub for the entire Docker community to converge and to share and to, uh, to um, come together. So. Um, this is going to be uh, a long work in progress and we'll be announcing, uh, sharing some updates along the way. So uh, look out for that. Uh, next slide, Alyssa. 
So Ben uh, mentioned uh, this uh, earlier, we have a developer preview program that we're very, very excited about and that we're officially launching. So back in April, some of you may have, may remember that we did a limited launch. We were just testing the waters to see what, you know, how we could manage a developer preview program and what um, um, community members uh, were expecting for the program. So we gathered all the learnings and now we're rolling out a full-fledged program that we're, uh, we're officially launching. So this is going to be a unique opportunity for, you know, power Docker users who want to uh, test, tweak, experiment, break stuff, uh, but really uh, try out um, new features uh, months before they are released. And uh, of course, this is an opportunity for um, for the community to work in lockstep with our engineering team to really shape our our product roadmap. So the program is open to uh, to everyone. Uh, there's a link to uh, to apply to join, and um, yeah, we'll be uh, publishing a blog post very very shortly. So you're you're the first to hear about this on this video. Um, all right. So next slide. Um, this is my favorite part of my presentation. I just want to uh, give special thanks to some outstanding uh, contributors. Um, the list of you know people who contributed to Docker is very long. It would take hours to uh, give a shout out to everyone, but I wanted to give a special shout out to some contributors who have gone above and beyond these uh, past couple of months. And um, next slide, I just wanted to um, shout out their name. Um, and if you are, uh, hopefully they're all connected, they're all uh, on the call. And so Kevin uh, Alvarez, aka Crazy Max, thank you for your work on GitHub Actions. Uh, really phenomenal work. Uh, Akihiro Tuda, Brian Goff, Mobi Maintainers, thank you, thank you for your um, very, very, very uh, important uh, contributions. Aurélie Vache, um, who has been working on a very interesting project, uh, the Docker sketch notes. Um, I, I have linked to, to those sketch notes, very, very interesting, important work. And last but not least, um, Brendan Mitchell, Mike Irwin, Brett Fisher, and Rashid Zarwali are a Docker captains who have uh, really uh, done exceptional work uh, these past weeks um, and really engaged, supported our community and worked uh, with our engineers. So thank you again. And um, with that, we will segue into the last section of the community of hands, which is the audience Q&A. So just a reminder of how we, um, oops, sorry, someone's, uh, should mute. Um, just a reminder of how we collected uh, the questions. So, you know, we've collected more than 90, I think 90 questions um, over the past couple of weeks and uh, with the tool where you can upvote uh, your, your favorite questions. So we're going to answer the top 10 questions. So the top 10 questions that have garnered the most votes, upvotes from the community. Um, and yeah, let's uh, dive in. We've got 16 minutes left. So hopefully we can cover all 10 questions and we're gonna start with uh, the first one. Um, I'll read it out. Um, sorry, Alyssa, could you go to the first question? So when can we expect a Docker release for Apple Silicon? Obviously this has been mentioned several times already in the past uh, hour. So um, JL, I'll let you answer this one. I think we talked a little bit about it. Um, so I think William, Ben, and a few others uh, just said that we have a developer preview program, so you, if you want to have your hand on that thing, uh, you just go over to that page, sign up in there, and uh, you're going to have access to a preview of uh, a Docker desktop on Apple Silicon, which means it's a preview, right? It's a tech preview, so it's going to break. It's not the GA release kind of thing, but at least uh, for uh, a large amount, a large number of um, of um, payloads and, and work, uh, you, you're going to be able to run that thing. Um, and then later on, we're going to ship a GA release um, in next year. Next year, We're actually working with Apple on a few things and the back and forth goes well. And uh, this is the kind of thing that needs to do, right? Like this is a new platform and there's a lot of work involved in this. So uh, short answer, uh, head over to the developer preview page, sign up in there and you're going to get access to a preview of it. Wait a little bit if you want to stay safe. Uh, and uh, wait for your computer because I know that they are shipping uh, not that fast anyway uh, because they're a large demand, I guess. So um, 
yeah, that's the way it, you can wait next year then. Great. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Jeff. All right, next question, question number two. Um, so for teams, and this is where we had two questions that were quite similar and that garnered um, a lot of votes. So we are going to put them in those the same kind of slide. So first one, for teams already using Docker Swarm, would you recommend them to keep using it or to try to migrate to other orchestration platforms in the following year? This was by Flora Stoika and Ruan Sinaran asked, with increasing or of Kubernetes while still putting effort on the Docker Swarm, rather put more effort in Docker before Podman. Anyway, um, it's a little bit, uh, we haven't edited any of the questions, but I think everyone's uh, getting the gist of the question. So um, uh, SJ, do you wanna do you wanna answer this one? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, William, and thank you both uh, for the questions. Um, let me start by saying, with the refocusing of Docker that I referenced earlier last, last year, um, that we've refocused 100% on developers and dev teams, our, our vision is that uh, the underlying orchestrator infrastructure is just, is you're agnostic to it, right? You're not impacted or tied to it. And so our vision is that Compose is the way in which you can define, describe, uh, develop your app, go through the build, share, and run, and that you're able to deploy that Compose defined app on any infrastructure, any orchestrated infrastructure. And today you're probably aware Compose works on top of Swarm and Kubernetes. The whole purpose of our open sourcing the Compose spec last March was to invite a wider community to contribute to that spec. And you saw Amazon jump on that, you saw Azure jump on that, HashiCorp and a whole bunch of others. Um, and as a result, the, the, uh, the ability of, of, of Compose to deploy to multiple orchestrators has only increased. So Compose today is used to deploy to AWS, the ECS orchestrator. It's also used to deploy to Azure ACI alongside Swarm and Kubernetes. And so our, our belief is that as with all tech, over time, the abstractions just keep moving up and get commoditized and, and further, uh, uh, further kind of hidden, if you will. And our belief is that orchestrators are gonna follow that path as well. And that Compose is the way to define your app, knowing that it's gonna be then safe, if you will, or available or agnostic to whatever underlying orchestrator. So that's that would be our, our first statement to this to these questions, is that, is that if you're with Compose and you define your app with Compose, you're covered. Second is, um, we absolutely respect the fact that many of you have made a lot of investments in Swarm, and that's why we work with Mirantis, uh, who, as you know, bought a whole set of Docker uh, enterprise technologies last year. We work with Mirantis so that Mirantis team will be running point uh, in the upstream Swarm project going forward, and that Docker will then be supporting them uh, behind the scenes or supporting their efforts as they reach out and ask, ask us questions. And so um, hopefully that answers the question. Again, summarize like Compose. If you're using Compose, you, you're covered regardless of orchestrator, and Swarm will be continue to be supported um, primarily by Mirantis with Docker's help. Thank you for the questions. Good, thanks uh, Scott. All right, moving on to the next question. This is the third most popular question. What are you doing to combat the idea that Docker is dead? For example, Docker does not work on CentOS 8, Red Hat pushing Podman, build a swarm and compose uncertainty. This is uh, asked by Jamshid. So um, who wants to take uh, this one? Jay? Yeah, I've got, I've got, yeah, I've got that. Thanks, William. And thank you for the question, Jamshid. Um, so as, as hopefully you're hearing from us on, on this venue, but hopefully you heard it at the virtual DockerCon and all the events that, that, that the community uh, is, that we're putting together for the community that, that William is, is taking point for us on is that our number one goal is to listen to you and continue to, to build and ship great products. And, and hopefully some of the things that we shared with you earlier today, uh, Docker Desktop on M1, the Hub tool, Docker Engine uh, 2010 just went out today. Like those are examples of us listening to you, taking your feedback, taking your contributions and creating a great experience to help you get your jobs done and building, sharing and running great applications. So that, that continues to be our focus. And there always is gonna be um, in our industry, as big as it is, as fast as growing as it is, there's always gonna be some competition. We just acknowledge that. And it, it's, not that um, it's not that we ignore that, we have to kind of pay attention, but at, at the end of the day, that's not as important as listening to our community and satisfying the needs of our community and our users. Um, so all that said, if you look at where some of these comments and particularly the last couple of weeks came from, it really came from two, uh, two individuals that uh, either are employed or formerly employed at, at what was a, a previous Docker Enterprise competitor. Um, and, and the fact that they had to go back three years to kind of pull out 
things to criticize Docker about was was kind of an interesting uh, interesting way in which they wanted to tell their story. Um, so I'll just I'll, that, and that's a data point. I'm not faulting them for wanting to tell that story and whatnot, but but look at where those stories and where those folks are employed or were they employed. Um, second is uh, if you look at where we've gone even in the last year, and in particular, I'll point back to Compose. Look at the number of industry supporters around Compose. Um, again, it runs on Swarm and Kubernetes. You've got uh, Microsoft Azure in there. You've got AWS ECS in there, and more are just building all the time. And so uh, we think that's a way, great way forward to kind of show that there's there's absolutely a lot of love for Compose, a lot of love for Compose defined applications, a lot of love for the Docker application images that are that are orchestrated by Compose. And that brings me to my last point, which is um, whether it's the Docker engine, whether it's Podman, whether it's uh, Container D, whether it's one of the cloud service runtimes, all of that is Docker OCI compatible. Meaning the industry is a big and growing one and it's not fragmented. And we think that's super important from a developer and community standpoint, because it means whatever apps you build, you're going to be protected wherever you want to run them. And honestly, competition is just a fact of life and something that we're going to continue to have in this industry going forward. We hope today we've shown that by listening to you, by continuing to keep that flywheel of innovation going and working with community and contributions and contributors that we can continue to deliver great features and great products that are going to help you do your jobs. Happy well, to take so other questions on that, but that's that's where we are. Sorry, I think I think I, I think Justin, uh, you were breaking up a little bit. Did, is it just me can or? You, can you hear me now? Can you, yeah, it's breaking up a little bit. Uh, okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. No, it's 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 uh, really choppy. Uh, uh, sure. Mm. No, all right. Sorry, I think it's yeah. It's I think we're having some some difficulty with your microphone uh, or connection, Justin. Okay, so let's uh, let's move let's move to the next question while Justin maybe reconnects. Um, and yeah, this was actually yeah, question four was uh, was for I was going to ask Justin to answer that one. So the the fifth most popular question. Um, was uh, by Tom and by Anonymous. Um, I'll read them out. Now that Docker is moving back to its open source roots, does this mean Docker will focus more time and resources uh, in supporting the Mobi project? Uh, and then the Mobi project has over 3,000 open issues and support is hit or miss. What are your plans to address this moving forward? All right, so this is also, I wanted to ask Justin, if you could chime in, Justin, are you with us? Yeah. I feel like we're on live television and we have a. Are you? Yeah. Oh no! Oh dear! So maybe I guess maybe you can dial in with your your phone maybe or something. Okay. All right. Well, we'll give it a few more minutes. We've got a few other questions. Let's go over the the next questions, and then and then we'll we'll revert back to to Justin once we we fix the the connectivity issue. Um, all right. Question uh, six. Um, sorry. Um, let's say yeah. There have been several announcements about better integration with AWS and Azure. How about GCP? This is by anonymous. Um, Donny, do you want to take this one? Yeah, happy to. Uh, and, and then we can jump back to some of those other ones I can help cover for Justin uh, as he's uh, getting his audio working. Um, you know, I think the framing around this, the way I think about it is, you know, Docker today is, is very open to partnerships and really excited about working with um, cloud service providers. You saw that with Azure, with AWS, um, with other companies like Sneak, where you've seen us do a lot of work around providing more secure um, container images to solve a lot of those problems for our customers. 
Um, and, and where GCP fits into this is, um, I think when we partner, it's because we're really focused on both sides of that partnership, solving joint customer problems. Um, and so we've seen for AWS and for Azure, um, that Docker was the best way from both ends to solve those customer problems around helping developers get their code to the cloud. Um, GCP and Google may be going at that at a, from a different perspective. Um, every company has a different way that they want to solve those problems based on their technology stack and um, the options they have available to them. Uh, and so we have partnerships with many of these different cloud providers um, focusing on different sets of joint problems. Um, and with uh, Azure with AWS, that's around Compose and using that as a code to cloud. Um, with Google, it focuses in other areas. Great. Thanks, Donnie. Um, all right, and do we have Justin back? If not, I'll maybe hand it over to JL or Donnie yeah. to uh, answer question four. Yeah, I, I can take this as well. Okay. Uh, all right, so the question is, I heard the Kubernetes is deprecating Docker because something, something open standards that Docker doesn't follow. What does this actually mean? So by Malcolm Anderson. Donnie, what's your, what's your take? Yeah, so... You know, I think as as we've heard already, you know, all the Docker tooling is OCI compliant, and we are one of the founders of the specification initially. Um, and, and Containerd in, in particular was designed um, to serve this role with Kubernetes. So when we released that, um, we intended that it would fit very cleanly into Kubernetes and run in the way we wanted to. Um, before that, and in the meanwhile, we've also had this Docker shim component that could um, insert all of Docker into playing that same role. Um, and so really what we're talking about here is um, the migration from inserting all of Docker into there using a shim component to make it work um, and Containerd, which we designed for this purpose. Um, now, alongside that, as you heard from uh, Scott earlier, uh, we've been working with Mirantis around the enterprise components of Docker. And so they're going to be continuing to pick up and maintain um, Docker shim. So it will still continue to work as is, um, but also, you know, we're happy that we have been, you know, designing, shipping, and supporting um, Containerd and the community behind that. Great. Thanks, Donny. Um, all right, and then for question five. Um, I, I can take it if yep. you want. Yeah, right. So, right. So the thing is more like uh, uh, we're moving back to open source where it's more about we are focusing on the development team, right, more, more than the open source part of it even though we're still maintaining a lot of open source uh, project and you've seen all the releases that I've been talking about earlier on that shows that we're still dedicated there um, and um, I, I think like Moby and all the open source project in which we previously uh, uh, invested uh, our focus is more relevant to development and development teams today right so this is more about this than really um, about like abandoning things or anything like that right it's like um, you, you've seen all the compose open, open specification and all those things justin do you want to try to complete what i just said uh, yeah, breaking up a lot uh, Um, anybody? No, it's not. I'm not. I'm not gonna... <laughs> anyway, that, so I think I answered most of it. So, like, uh, maybe we can go to the next one. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Jill. And in, I'm conscious of time. We are one minute. We have one minute left. But you know, we're gonna maybe breeze through the last uh, three questions. What are Docker plans to support Docker Compose on ARM architecture, uh, Jill? So there is multiple tech to that one. The first one is like, you want to have Docker Compose uh, run there. Yes, it runs. Uh, 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 and and the, 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 the architecture we drive, we are thinking for the Compose in the future is going to be supported there. So definitely yes. And also like it, since we're doubling down on uh, Apple uh, on um, Docker desktop on uh, ARM uh, architecture, yes, this will work. Now, maybe the question is more about like, will Docker uh, Compose support uh, building multi-arc images, which is something that is kind of hard to do today. So we have planned for this. So of course, uh, multi-arc uh, images uh, works very well with uh, build kit and build today. 
uh, but like yes we want, we plan to build work on this uh, next year uh, so you will be able to build multi-arc images on compose so try to answer the two variation of the same question i don't know <laughs> great okay um maybe yeah i'm conscious of time you know we unfortunately we had these slight uh technical issues uh, we want to keep it you know Time box it one hour, so we're going to stick to that. Uh, what I suggest we do is we're going to answer the follow-up, uh, the the remaining questions, and then publish uh, them in a blog post. In fact, we also have uh, some really great questions that came in during um, the whole uh, the different presentations. So we'll answer those as well, and we'll publish them uh, as soon as possible in a beautiful blog post um, in the next uh, day or so. Um, so I just want to, Alyssa, if we can go just to the last slide, I just want to thank everyone once again for um, you know, joining us for this experimental uh, Committee to All Hands. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it uh, uh, interesting. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, this is hopefully the first of a series of All Hands that we'll be doing with the community. Thank you so much. You can always join us. We're uh, on Docker Slack if you're not other already, and we're always reachable. Do not hesitate to reach out to us. And if you have a question, or you know, you can always ping me on Slack. I'm at William. And if I can't answer your question, I'll, I'll redirect you to the right person in uh, Docker. So again, once again, thank you. We will share the recording um, on um, the community Slack as soon as possible. Thanks everyone, and stay safe. And until next time, bye bye.